Hello and welcome to Wagner. Today we're going to be talking about the Wagner Fine Spray Range. If your customers have a small to medium sized project that requires precision spraying, then the Wagner Fine Spray Range is perfect. We'll also give you a few tricks of the trade to pass on to them to ensure that they get the best results. There are five HVLP units in the Fine Spray Range, starting with the W550, the W560, the W610, the W670, and the Project Pro 213. They range in price from $129 through to $499. You'll find more information in the Wagner product guide. Fine sprayers use HVLP technology. That's high volume of air, lots of air racing through, but at very low pressure, and are classified as a finishing tool. They are ideal for painting furniture, shelving, cabinets, doors and architraves. However, are not designed for spraying large surfaces. Suitable paints to use would be oil-based primers, wood preservatives, oils, stains, lacquers and special effect paints. Larger fine sprayers are also capable of spraying some water-based paints using the high flow front end. We have a turbine on the back, just like a dust buster or your vacuum cleaner, but it's blowing air through. It's blowing huge amounts of air down through the pump section. Now not all of that air can come out through the air cap, so it causes a restriction. The overflow of air flows down through the check valve, which is a one-way valve, into the bowl, pressurizing the bowl, forcing paint up into the gun body, out through the fluid nozzle, and gets atomized by that air that's come through the air cap. Since the paint pressure is so much lower, the atomized paint has less bounce back off the surface being sprayed, resulting in greater transfer efficiency and better control. The Wagner Fine Spray Guns offer a choice of three spray patterns for greater control. Simply adjust the spray setting depending on the object being sprayed. The fine sprayers come with three optional front ends, along with the standard front end that comes with all the guns. The click and paint system uses this little lever to unlock it. You turn and twist off, allowing you to change to any of these front ends. They're all interchangeable. Along with the standard front end, we have the low volume front end. Ideal for all your stenciling, art and modelling work. Then we have the high flow front end. This is great for your interior acrylic work. We also have the long reach front end. This is great for getting into the back of cupboards and behind radiators. The paint comes out and sprays at a 25 degree angle. This is the latest in the fine spray range, the W670. Two stage turbine with a two speed switch. It's got low for your thinner products, your stains and your enamels. Also the high setting for your interior acrylics. On the side here we have the air filter, which we must always keep clean. To assemble up the gun, Grab a hose out of the box, the hose plugs in the front, let's give it a light turn, and the other end of the hose goes in the back of our gun. Pour paint into the container, now we're ready to spray. Always recommend to your customers that they perform a brief spray trial in order to test the right spray setting, and if necessary, adjust it before they start their spraying project. The spray setting can be varied depending on the object. There's a vertical setting for side to side, a horizontal setting for up and down, and a round setting for intricate work, delivering precise, uniform application of paint every time. The W670 also features the unique click and paint system for quick changeover of front ends and for safer, faster cleanup, giving your customers the benefit of being able to change colours in only a few seconds. The paint flow rate can also be regulated precisely and smoothly directly on the gun handle so your customers will always have the optimum paint flow. To strip the W670 down for any cleaning or any maintenance, just twist the hose at the back, that comes away, and the turbine can be put away on the bench. The gun handle with the click and paint technology, that comes away. The bowl unscrews off the bottom, Here we have our rigid suction tube. Now if I want to spray a ceiling, 
if I wanted to spray down onto a table. So now that rigid suction tube will suck from the bottom of the bowl. Pull the suction tube just straight out, giving it a slight turn. Now the trick of the trade, if the machine starts to flutter when you're spraying, or it won't pick up any paint, check the little hole on the top of the suction stem under the white washer. There's a hole there that must be kept clean. That hole goes from the bottom of the washer up to the top and comes out up in here. Now if that is blocked for any reason, the gun won't be able to pick up any paint and run. So you can clean that out with a needle or a pin. On the side of the gun, we have the check valve. To pull that apart for cleaning or any maintenance, pull the hose off the side and unscrew off the base. Now underneath here is a little blue check valve. If you're getting paint coming back up into this hose, that means that check valve is either jammed open or it's gone missing, it's got lost the last time you've cleaned up. That little valve there has to be inside for the gun to work. There's a picture on the side of the gun housing just showing you which way around the check valve goes. The stem on the check valve always goes up. We can get the valve, put the stem into the housing, making sure that it goes into the hole and it's nice and straight. And we screw it on. A little test for you. You should be able to blow through that hose, but not suck back. I can't suck back through it, so I know it's good and it's sealing. Push the hose back onto the side of the gun. Now, to pull apart the front nozzle, unscrew the front lock nut. This is the air cap. And it's really important that the holes in the air cap are kept really clean. If they're blocked, again, use your pin or a needle just to make sure they're nice and clean. And at any stage you can give it a good clean with a toothbrush. Under the air cap we have the fluid nozzle. Give that a wiggle and that'll come off. And this is what the needle inside the gun seals against when you release the trigger to stop the paint coming out. If you release the trigger and you've still got paint coming out, then you have a piece of paint skin or a bit of debris stuck in here holding this valve open a little bit. What we need to do is unscrew it, give it a clean with your toothbrush again, reassemble it. Over time, if you're using oil-based paints and solvent-based paints, the little lip seal in the front of the gun can wear out and need replacing. This little seal just separates the paint in the centre from the air on the outside. So you know if this is leaking because you'll get paint coming through the air cap. When you buy the gun, inside the bowl, there'll be a little sachet of Vaseline and a spare seal. These are available as a spare part. To reassemble, put a little Vaseline on the seal and make sure that the lip side is out. Slide it back on the front of the gun. Now the rest of the gun is ready to go back together. In the front of the gun housing we have a little key. That key needs to locate with one of these slots around the outside of the fluid nozzle. It can go on in any one of those slots. So just slide it on and turn it around till it locates, push it on. Next is the air cap. This can go on in any position. And then the lock nut over the top and screw that on, but we don't do it up so tight that we can't move the air cap. Underneath, we've got our rigid suction stem, goes back in, push that straight in, and then the bowl screws over the top. Before we start spraying, it's really important that we test the thickness or the viscosity of our paint. Each of the power sprayers or fine spray machines come with a viscosity cup inside the bowl when you buy the machine. How we test the viscosity is we dip it into the paint, we pull it out and we start our stopwatch. 
we start counting off seconds until we get the first drip or the first break from the bottom of the cup. Once we get that break, we stop our watch and those seconds are now a reference to how thick the paint is. We've got our first drips and our first break. In this instance, it's taken too long, so we need to thin the paint a little. If the paint doesn't flow through the viscosity cup at all, then we know that the paint is too thick and we may need to thin up to a maximum of 10%. In the Wagner product catalogue, you'll find reference to paint viscosities and how many seconds the paint should flow through the viscosity cups for the different machines. Most paints can be thinned up to 10%, but check the product guide on the back of the paint tin. Now some basic principles of spraying. If I want to spray across the wall, put the nozzle in this position. If I wanted to spray down a wall, I have the nozzle in this position. Anything where I need just a nice, fine, small, round spray, I just put the air cap in a diagonal position, and now that'll give me a nice, fine jet coming out. I can feather the trigger for more or less paint. I'm triggering off with the gun still moving. I come back, gun's nice and straight, I'm gonna overlap by 50%. Triggering off with the gun moving, come back. Triggering off. Now the first coat wants to be a little bit see-through. You don't wanna put the full coverage on on the first coat, otherwise you're gonna get runs. So now we're gonna let that just tack off and tacking off is when we just put the back of our finger on the paint, we can touch it and we don't get any paint coming off. Once it's tacked off, we can put the second coat on and that's full coverage coat. Again, we're gonna move the gun, keep it nice and straight, relax. Triggering off, gun's still moving. I come back, overlap 50%. Triggering off with the gun still moving, I come back. Now we've got perfect, even finish. There is virtually no limit to the applications and your customers' creativity. Cleaning up is usually the worst part of any job, but no matter which unit your customer chooses from the Wagner Fine Spray range, they'll find them as easy to clean as they are to use. Just tip the excess paint from the container back into the tin and throw everything in a small bucket of water. And let it soak for a few minutes then pull it out and dry them down with a rag. Or if you're using oil-based paints, use terps and an old toothbrush. Whatever your customer's painting project requirements, you can guarantee them a faster, smarter finish by recommending Wagner's Fine Spray range. Here's a few tips and tricks to pass on to your customers. For a high quality finish, always start by preparing what you want to paint by sanding, undercoating or cleaning. Remember, Preparation is everything. When you change your working direction, change your spray nozzle position. The setting can be varied depending on the object. There's a vertical setting for side to side, a horizontal setting for up and down, and a round setting for intricate work, delivering precise, uniform application of paint every time. Preparation has never been faster or smarter. Simply mask up if things are not being sprayed with your masking plastic. Now you're ready to spray. Okay, our paint's dried, the masking's ready to come off. How's that? That's all on the Wagner Fine Spray range for now. If you've got any questions or need product information, or technical advice, visit our website or call 1800 Wagner.